Lex Friedman is a computer science researcher at MIT, and he is also a podcaster for his own podcast, The Lex Friedman Podcast. The Lex Friedman Podcast is a long-form interview podcast, and Lex usually invites other researchers in the field of technology as guests on the podcast. But Lex also has a lot of other interests and invites guests from those areas, including mixed martial arts, comedy, politics, and music. In whichever the area the guest is from, Lex always manages to conduct a very intelligent and very informative interview. Lex is never too afraid to ask too many questions. And Lex is never too afraid to challenge on what the guest is saying. And more importantly, Lex always seems to be 100% present at the conversation. And because Lex is such a great interviewer, he's had many prolific guests from different fields, including Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, and Andrew Huberman. But to me, one of the most unlikely and one of the most exciting guests he's ever had on is Ye, or formerly known as Kanye West. You might have seen this clip that went viral from the interview before. I won't admit. Your, your dad was right. <laughs> your dad was right. The, the words you used, the, you weren't, the and point I you were- And I said it. You're not gonna make me say it 800 more times. I don't know if it resonated because you keep saying like the words. Did it resonate to y'all that y'all ain't do nothing about it? And that all y'all want to do is have somebody apologize and sweep under the rug your bullshit that you've been doing the whole time. The whole interview is 2 hours 26 minutes long. And the length itself shows how good of an interviewer Lex is. Ye is known to be a difficult person to interview, not really cooperating with the interviewer, often diverging into different topics and often just straight up walking out of the interview. Around the time this interview took place, Ye was constantly on the news for making anti-Semitic comments publicly online. And because of this, it was especially a sensitive time for Ye. I've known Lex to be a cool, calm, collected person, but Lex being a Jew himself, I wondered how he would conduct the interview. Will he pull back on the punches because he knows that Ye could walk out of the interview any second? Or will he still challenge you on the ideas that he doesn't agree with? But spoiler alert, I think Lex conducted a very good interview on this. There were of course many obstacles to go around, but it was really cool to see how Lex managed to do that. And while doing so, it was really cool to see different sides of Ye that wasn't seen publicly before. So I thought it would be cool to go through some of the key moments from the interview and just learn from the great Lex Friedman. Just before we go on, I do want to point out that there are a lot of political ideas thrown out in the clips that I will share. But keep in mind that I'm not here to make comments on the ideas themselves, but rather how the ideas were communicated. Are you, are you, are you happy? Listening to a podcast is like watching a movie. There's the setup, there's the build up, there's climax, and there's release. And this clip that we just saw comes in the first 20 minutes of the podcast. And I think this clip sets the tone of the podcast. This shows that Lex is not afraid to ask this abstract questions that requires more thinking. And Ye reciprocates the sentiment by taking the question seriously and answering in a genuine way. Absolutely. I'm just here. It's actually... It's difficult to make me unhappy. Now, I can deal with frustrations. The start of the podcast went really went for Lex, but of course there are obstacles. The first obstacle came from the discussion that Lex and Ye were having about human versus robots. Ye was saying that for some tasks, he prefers them being done by a human rather than a robot. And Lex jokes that he's deeply offended as a person who is a fan of robots and artificial intelligence. And they both laugh as they're having a wholesome moment. But then Lex takes another step forward with the joke. And you can see him regretting it immediately. So yeah, I, but that makes it more efficient, right? You don't like the efficiency. You like the creativity of the singular nature of the pattern. I believe that the human beings, and I'm saying this to you as a person who makes robots and a person who's friends yeah, with I'm Elon. I'm deeply offended robot. right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, you know, I'll let it go. Okay. It's good. So, yeah, I believe that the- Yay yeah, hates robots. I'm not, I'm not going to put that out. It's a joke. Ro Here, robots yeah. have feelings too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it, right. That was also a joke. I just thought it was a nice moment. This shows that how many episodes that Lex has done, he's still a human. <laughs> you know, he feels nervous just like everyone else. There were a few lighthearted moments like this throughout the podcast, but most of the podcast was a bit more heavy weighted. And one of the topics that they discussed that were a little bit more heavy weighted was on the anti-Semitic comments that Ye made or the ideas Ye had about Holocaust. 
go visit the Holocaust Museum. And my response was, let's visit our Holocaust Museum, Planned Parenthood. With all due respect, I grew up in the Soviet Union. I'm Jewish. Parts of my family perished in the, in the Holocaust of Nazi Germany. I have to push back that there is a difference of the atrocities at that scale, at that time, on an entire people. I was gonna say the number, that's the difference. Notice how Lex criticizes Ye's idea, but never Ye as a person. And Lex backs up his criticism with his own ideas, and he does it in a way such that it is so easy to understand him, and it's so easy to relate to him. So throughout the podcast, Ye keeps using the term Jewish media to refer to the media, and Lex pushes back on Ye using that term. Can I just linger on this? Because when you say Jewish media, it there's a echo of a pain that people feel that reminds you, you're an saying entire- it, You're saying it's redundant, right? Huh. No, I'm not saying it's redundant. I'm, I'm saying, saying it's redundant. You're saying it's redundant. <laughs> it's a redundant I'm saying it's something it's that jo- I'm saying that it's something that Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister of Nazi Germany, said. I'm saying it's been said so many times in order to murder and torture Jewish people that I would, it just rings wrong. I, and that's the just thing. Just like the N word when spoken by people that, that have the same skin color as me. It reminds people of a very dark time. Lex explains how this is hurtful for a lot of people and quite often it incites violence in a lot of people. Just like an academic that he is, he articulates it very well and he also brings up a reference that he's seen this before and how he, it ended up in a bad way. And shortly after that clip, Lex pushes back on Ye for claiming that he's a Jew. I know if, if Jewish people would accept that I'm Jew, then they would see what I'm saying in a different way. They would hear it in a different way. But see, the people, you saying you're Jewish, that- No, I'm Jew, not Jewish. Jew, Jewish Jew. means like that of a Jew. I'm saying I'm Jew. You're Jew. Blood of Christ, that Orthodox comes from, Christian. Right. <laughs> but that, the, are you um, are you a follower of the philosophy of the black Hebrew Israelites? Because that's where the idea comes from. Not all of those folks are extremists, but some are extremists. Yeis, of course, had a lot of pushbacks in the past before, but it's really refreshing to see him being pushed back by someone who is intelligent, who is informed, and who is articulate and intelligent enough to communicate those ideas. And of course, a good debate should flow both ways. The next clip is on a topic that where Ye claims that we shouldn't focus, we shouldn't remember the past. You, you know, there's nothing to learn from that. We should focus on the current, what is happening in the present moment. Lex pushes back on this and Ye again disagrees to what Lex is saying. Is in rep- and we're having this history lesson, right? I and- thought history doesn't matter. You're exploring ancient history and drawing deep wisdom from it. And at the same time saying, we need to forget all of it. We need to put that behind us. Absolutely. We need to forget it and we need to move forward. There is so much wisdom to draw from history, even the 20th century. Look at this, communism. Without the lessons of history of the 20th century, communism sounds like a great idea, except that some of the worst atrocities conducted by Stalin and Mao that killed 50, 100 plus million people, not just killed, tortured, starvation, where people, the uh, cannibalism, they ate each other, they ate their children. There's, there's just dark. People, people should read some books on this on the uh, Holodomor in the 1930s. But I disagree. With that lesson, we would, and now it's becoming more popular. I'm not, Marxism I'm, and communism. I'm not disagreeing that that happened. I'm disagreeing that we need to harp on the things that happened because the truth is, I'm given a fact. And I really like this part because Ye obviously feels comfortable enough to push back on what Lex is saying. The following clip is Lex once again pushing back on Ye for keep using the term Jewish media. But watch how it's so easy to relate to what Lex is saying. There's a Jewish person right there controlling the, the, the country, the Jewish controlling that who gets the best video or not, controlling what the media says about me. a person not Jewish. Let me just say one thing. But they are though. That's the only thing. It just so happens that they are. 
It just you so happens saying that they are. It, that that's doesn't a, mean that I hate them. Yes, that yes, just yes. means that they are. But it's a it's a dog whistle. To let me let me just say, as mm -hmm. I would love to add more love to the world. I would love you to do that as a person with a big voice, with a big, powerful voice that a lot of people look up to. And when you say Jewish media, it's funny how this world works that way. When you say Jewish media or Jews are controlling the voice of black artists, black people, am, black artists, am, am when I, you say that- Am I not allowed to say it out loud? You can say it. There's a large number of people that are hurting and have anger and even have hate in their heart when they hear when they hear Jewish media they start that hate starts being directed towards the Jewish people to me Lex comes across as someone who's thought a lot about what he wants to stand for and what his core values are and I think that's why it, it's so easy for him to come up on the spot why what Ye saying makes him uneasy and communicate that idea I also think it was really brave of Lex to once again call him out on something that he doesn't agree with especially when he has had to do that over and over again in the next clip you can really see the difference in the communication skills between Ye and Lex they're talking about engineering which is Lex's expertise and you can see that Ye ends up looking a little bit more childish but Lex still listens to what he has to say and responds in a mature way there's no control of the media by Jewish people. You're an people. engineer, brother. If you're an engineer and you're not holding to the truth, that's not engineering. Engineering is not, that's not, that doesn't, that's hate. That's not engineering. Engineering no, it's, it's says, called, I'm going to build a better record label. It's called stereotypes. And I'm going to respect our Stereotypes exist for a reason. Engineers don't do stereotypes. The next clip is the clip that went viral from the episode. So Lex asks Ye if there is anyone in his life that he trusts enough for them to call out in this bullshit. And Ye takes a bit of offense to that. So is there somebody in your life close to you that that you trust enough to call you out on your bullshit? We're all full of shit sometimes. What's my bullshit? Well, some of it I pointed out today, huh. but I don't what know you deeply enough. Though? What was the bullshit? Jewish media, Jewish- That's not bullshit. The bullshit is that the Jewish media no, no. won't admit. Your, your dad was right. <laughs> the your dad was right. The, the words you used, the you weren't. The and point I you said were, it. You're not gonna make me say it 800 more times. I don't know if it resonated because you keep saying like the words. Did it resonate to y'all that y'all ain't do nothing about it, and that all y'all want to do is have somebody apologize and sweep under the rug your bullshit that you've been doing the whole time. Yeah, you you on the same bullshit as the other people. So you're doing the same thing that the other, let's say media, because I'm not allowed to yeah. say, has done. So until somebody which stands is what? up. Which is what, man? Is, which is what? Is, I'm trying to call you out in your bullshit because I hope I'm somebody you can trust. I That's don't it. fucking trust you. Well, you should find people in your life you can trust. Don't tell me what I should do. I'm not one of your BLM marchers. The clip is less than two minutes long, but you can feel the intensity of the clip. And I think something like this had to happen, right? Ye is a very strong character himself with very passionate ideas. And Lex himself is a, a very strong character with very, very passionate ideas. And at the same time, he's very keen to challenge Ye on his ideas in a very intellectual and very critical manner. And because of that, there's a lot of friction between them two. And the next clip I want to play is kind of wholesome. So this is just after they raise their voices and they seem like they feel kind of self-conscious about each other and they're kind of not making eye contact. But it looks like they still like and respect each other and want to be in the conversation. And I watched the Candace Owens documentary. And what, what was your take on it? I think it's important to question the mainstream narratives, but well, I don't agree with it. I thought that was just a kind of a wholesome moment. And these kind of moments remind me that we're all just children, but some of us a little bit older than the other children. But I really liked how Lex kept his calm and cool there. You know, if it was me, I feel like I, my hands would be shaking, my voice would be shaking, and I'll just be stuttering, but he keeps his calm, he keeps his cool. And I think it goes to show how strong and tough Lex is mentally. One of my favorite things about this episode is that Ye is not afraid to talk about and is genuinely interested in engineering, which is Lex's expertise. And Ye has a lot of wild ideas on it. And Lex, using his expertise, he can challenge those ideas. 
we've been made sick. We've been allowed to be sick. We've been promote, and we're promoting sickness. I think, at least in the engineering realm, I haven't met an engineer who happens to be black who would like to be called a black engineer. And when you have a company of all black people that are engineers, I don't know the creative arts. I apologize, but engineering, they really try to look at each other as humans. I think that's just really refreshing to see. One of the things that makes Lex not only a great interviewer but also a very likable person is that he's very honest, open, and vulnerable. And you can see that in this clip right here. But I got to tell you, I have to be honest.、Um, I don't. This is silly because you don't know me. But it, it hurt when you say you don't trust me. You kind of lost me. I don't think anyone's ever said that to me. I don't know, man. Fuck that. You know, I'm not. I don't care about. Uh, views or clickbait or any of that bullshit.、Um, I just thought you were one of the great, greatest artists ever. It'd be cool to talk to you, and I just I feel like you got pain you're working through. I never had anyone say that to me. I, I maybe I'm just being a mess about it. I guess that's fucked up though. But maybe it's not. Maybe you shouldn't trust it. But, but I just haven't had that experience. I, yeah. Do you think I would trust anybody at this point in my life? Yeah, it's tough. All in all, I think it was a very emotional conversation for both parties, but it ends up ending on a very high note. If we're to engineer a better future, the way to do that is with love. So, as one human to another, I love you, brother. Thank you for talking today. This is great. I like you too. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that there was a successful interview, and. I thought there were some cool moments to share with you to learn from the great Lex Friedman, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. But most importantly, thank you for watching, and I appreciate you for being here. Okay, that's about it. Bye, everyone. See ya. You're under a lot of attack, a lot of attack, by a lot of people. You have a vision, and you're trying to feel your way through it, and you might get destroyed for it. That's the human.、Uh, that's the risk you take. It's a wonderful life, though.